YouTubes. Welcome back to James Recommends. Uh, this week's episode almost didn't get finished because I was playing Anno. So this week we're going to talk about Anno. And in fact, I'm going to try and talk about uh, Anno 1404, or Dawn of Discovery, the iPad version of Anno, and Anno 2070. And I'm almost certainly going to run out of tape, and this is going to be terrible. But here we go. So what is Anno? Anno is a deep city building series. Uh, it's got, to me, a great deal more depth than at least a lot of the more modern Sim Cities, which is probably the game you compare it most to, but I think of them as two very fundamentally different games. If you're looking for a city building game, I can't recommend Anno enough. But Anno is much more about chains of production, about the resources you need and the goods you need to maintain a civilization on a grander scale. As your society goes from a small village to a, a provincial city to a capital, you're going to need much more advanced resources. At first, all the people ask for is fish, and later on you have to provide them with everything from fur coats to books to candlesticks. Uh, and to do so, you have to both produce the resources, the raw materials to make these things, and put together the production buildings, the chains of production that are going to allow you to produce these finished goods and provide them to your people. And all the while, a lot of it depends on trade. Because this is a game, and in all the other games, what you get is, you don't get this big open city map. What you get is an island. And you can go around and just explore the map, and there's a bunch of other islands, but you're going to start on just one island. And on that island, there are certain uh, resources that you can extract, right? There's, there's only certain types of mines, and in this game, there are something like five or six different types of mineable goods, everything from uh, stone to iron to uh, salt, right? And at the same time, the ground only has certain fertilities. You may be able to grow cider and apples on this particular island, whereas this island over here has the ability to grow coffee or spices. And so you get this one small island and you start building this small city. And what I love about it is a lot of the mechanics in the game, I think there's a very elegant design, a lot of the mechanics in the game force you to create cities that feel like real cities. Uh, you have to connect all of your uh, your population's housing to a marketplace. And so you place it on a marketplace, but the marketplace can only affect within a certain radius. So you'll build your housing in a radius around this marketplace, and as you go, eventually you'll put in other things like a fire station and a tavern in that center area because this radial area forces you to create districts around these little uh, market areas. And then you'll find you're creating other industrial districts, so you're not taking up any of that space that the marketplace actually sort of covers that allows you to build uh, residential within it. And so you'll find that you're just building industrial districts in other areas, not because of any artificial rule system, but simply because of the overlapping areas of coverage from some of these buildings that you can build. And as you go through, at first, your people are in little tiny huts, but as once you reach a certain level, once you get enough of them, you can upgrade some of those huts to a higher level of sort of civilization. And that unlocks whole new buildings, but also gets the people to make new demands. And you can't upgrade further your civilization level until all of your people are, are their demands are largely met, right? You have to hit like 90% on all the things they ask for. So where they once asked for fish, well now they ask for entertainment, they need a tavern, and they want cider, right? So now you have to build some apple orchards. But this is all on tiny islands, so you're also continuously fighting for space. You can't just build this big, sprawling city. You have to figure out really how you're gonna maximize how you use the space within your island. And then you start to explore. You finally have enough, you've got built up enough chain of production, you've got some basic tools and lumber and all this stuff, and so now you start to go out and colonize. And you've gotten your people up to a point where they ask for some resource that you may not have on your starting island. They want beer, and so you need a place that has hops. Send out a ship and you start to uh, develop that second island. But what's really interesting is, again, due to the mechanics of the game, due to the simple mechanics 
rather than build a whole nother small city people, the second island of yours will become a plantation island because it has these resources that you need. And so it really feels like that early age of discovery experience where you're sailing off and you've got this main island that's being fed by all these colonies that you're putting out and you're continuously vying for control of these colonial islands, these plantation islands that allow you to get resources to your capital, to get your people in your main city finished goods that you otherwise couldn't have gotten, riches from around the world. And especially in uh, Anno 1404 or Dawn of Discovery, uh, and in the US, if you're in the US, it's gonna be called Dawn of Discovery. I don't know why, couldn't possibly have been a trademark fight. So who knows? But yes, if you're on the US on Steam, Dawn of Discovery. Uh, it's, it's this great experience also where if you have the expansion, there are other civilizations you encounter. So if you head far enough south, you'll hit sort of a Eastern or at least Middle Eastern civilization, you'll hit this uh, sultanate and uh, you'll have to build up whole other areas to get exotic goods like spices and, uh, and rugs and all these other things that your civilization may need to support itself. And this was to me not only an incredible challenge, right? It's a really tough game, especially if you're playing at the higher difficulties. But it, and it gave me something to think about, right? I would continuously, I'd walk away from the game and I'd still be thinking about how I could maximize the use of my space, how I could build better districts, how I could get the resources I needed. Um, but within this, there's lots of other aspects as well. There's trade, right? You'd be continuously setting up trade routes, you'd be building ships and setting them sort of automatic trade routes to bring back and forth goods, deliver these goods. You'll be fighting off pirates. You'll be uh, negotiating with all the other forces in it. But the best way to play this game if you have some friends who want to hang out, you can play this game in multiple different ways. You can play it as a single player campaign, which is good, but truth, what got me was the continuous play, the building a city for as long as you wanted. You can play that as a solo game and it's a blast. But if you have some friends, you can play this competitive game, which is really good and really interesting. But I actually really like the co-op, because you have two co-op options. You can either play as multiple different individuals, each sort of ruling their own island, having their own agenda, building up their own civilization, or you can set up to four other people to play the same city with you. And this is actually really, I mean, you need to get to the further levels, especially on the hard difficulty, especially if you're matching yourselves against a number of other computer opponents who are very aggressive. You need people watching. One person's managing your Middle Eastern colonies and understands the Middle Eastern building chain and is delivering spices and making sure that the spice will flow. And uh, the another person is out maintaining your other plantations, which are feeding back. And then another person is just desperately trying to uh, increase the level of culture and the goods that flow in and establish a higher and higher main island so that way as you proceed forward uh, you as your civilization reaches new levels of uh, well civilization you unlock new building types not only for you but for every player on your team so now all of your plantations can do new stuff and it's this exciting race that's one of the best co-op experiences i've had I personally really, really liked Anno 1404 or Dawn of Discovery, and that's the one I'm really highly recommending today. But I want to touch on two others real quick. First, there's a sort of version of this game for your iPad. Uh, and I think iPhone too, I'm not sure. But the thing I have to recommend about the iPad version is Played a lot of city building games on your iPad, and most of them are basically Farmville, just with a city. Uh, I'm not sure, I think this week a new Sim City came out. I'll have to check it out. But this Anno game is definitely the truest city builder that I've ever seen on an iPad. It's completely free. It mirrors a lot of the good things about uh, Anno 1404 without the rich multiplayer experience. And so if you're looking for an introduction, if you're looking for a free version of this, if you're looking for uh, some simple yes, it has all the, uh, some of the trappings are free to play. I played it forever for free, but 
it's actually I mean, probably the best city building sim you're gonna find on the iPad, period. So that's the iPad version. And then I wanted to talk about 2070 because I didn't get into 2070 quite as much, but if you played 1404, it's also a really fascinating experience. 2070 is the um, future version of Anno, the post-ecological collapse Anno game. And so all the things I just talked about, about 1404, well, this game has, but instead of uh, sort of discovering and beginning to build that network trade, you're rebuilding society from the ground up. And it has all those aspects, plus we get the expansion, it's got this really cool moment where you get a submarine and all of a sudden you can start colonizing these underwater plateaus. You build underwater cities as well which is a highly engaging aspect to it. Uh, so I think I'm running out of time on this tape. Uh, that's going to be just about it. My only warning, my only caveat is the Anno games require that you have some patience with them and you're not going to win it in the first try. You're going to reset a bunch. You will probably have to do some research on the internet to figure out exactly how all the building chains fit together. These are not simple games. If you want, do a continuous game and basically turn off the AI opponents until you really learn how the uh, how the game itself progresses and then turn it back on. And that's something I didn't even really mention, touch on. But unlike something like SimCity, I also really like the fact that you have other AI or human players in the experience competing for the same resources, sort of pressuring you to build your city as efficiently as possible, but also making some risk reward choices along the way. But if you like complex city building games, if you want, if you're looking for something like SimCity, but way deeper, if a experience either in our uh, age of discovery past or our post eco collapse future sound like something that would engage you that you're interested in? Well, this week I highly recommend the Anno series. That I'll just see you all next week. <laughs>